Hi, it's November 21st, 2007, and it's Rob Bryanson here from Imagining the Tenth Dimension here in the chat window. Uh, just uh, before we start here, uh, I'll give my little preamble that we usually do. Uh, uh, if you're watching this at tenthdimension.com slash chat, you'll see me up in the top left. The show you're watching right now actually is a pre-recorded show, uh, but the text that's rolling underneath, uh, assuming things are working correctly, uh, is actually stuff that people are typing into the chat window so people can comment to each other as the shows are going by. Uh, also, uh, this is a uh, Mebo room that, uh, that that part of the chat is coming from, so there is over to the right uh, a bunch of links uh, and thumbnails that you can click on to watch uh, URLs and, uh, and videos that have been posted by people uh, uh, who have previously been in the room. Uh, it keeps a, a record of about, uh, what is it, 16 or 18 of them. And uh, so anybody who wants to uh, post something that they think is interesting and, uh, and uh, hopefully relevant to the discussion, but uh, we're pretty free-ranging here, so that uh, does cover an awful lot of ground. Uh, if you want to uh, just type a, a URL into uh, this chat window, it will become part of the thumbnails over to the right. And uh, uh, so uh, we do keep track of the stuff that people say into that chat room and uh, do try to respond to it. Uh, I admit uh, I've been a little bit lax in that in the last week or so, been uh, busy with other parts of the project, but, uh, but we will be cleaning that up uh, uh, and uh, making sure to acknowledge some of the things that uh, people have been saying into that window. Uh, actually, just before I started recording this show, I saw somebody had said, I don't know about all these songs. And uh, I guess uh, that's a background that people need to know about what's happening with this project is, uh, is it actually started out as a set of songs that I'd written about the nature of reality uh, that involved a ten-dimensional way of thinking about the nature of reality. And uh, as I was uh, showing people the songs, it became apparent that I was going to have to create a little booklet that uh, explained the ideas behind it. That booklet ended up becoming the popular book Imagining the Tenth Dimension, which uh, uh, is associated with this website, and uh, this website's now uh, surprisingly popular. It's uh, a meme that is sweeping the world, uh, to use the terminology we're often talking about here. Uh, two million hits a month right now, and uh, it just seems like uh, people really like talking about the nature of reality and, uh, and how that relates to philosophy and, uh, and uh, the other metaphysical and uh, scientific uh, uh, tangents that you can get into from this way of thinking. So uh, today, uh, we're actually trying to duplicate a show that uh, we recorded yesterday and uh, unfortunately there was a problem with the audio that uh, meant the show can't be broadcast. Uh, so uh, yesterday was kind of fun because uh, we started the show with my dog buddy, Bishan. He's uh, 105 years old right now uh, and uh, he's almost 16. Uh, which means, you know, he's getting on in age. He's actually uh, completely deaf, and uh, the vet says he's mostly blind, but he's uh, uh, still got that joie de vivre that everybody uh, loves to see. Maybe, uh, Jason, if you can... Uh, okay, and we, we got that up on the, the video. Uh, you know, one of the descriptions I've made of life uh, uh, that can be general enough to uh, fit with this way of thinking is life is any process that's interested in what happens next and you know uh, when we look at, uh, at uh, somebody like Buddy who uh, has an interest in what's going to happen next from the moment he gets up to the moment he lays down for his nap to the moment he gets up again and just through the day there's always a certain joy in his approach to life that, uh, that I think uh, you know a lot of us uh, could take some lessons from. Uh, Buddy's uh, got his problems but he's uh, uh, still you know, in there, and uh, we're giving him the medications to to uh, keep him happy and uh, reasonably pain free. Even though he's he's kind of limp from limping from the the arthritis in his legs and that kind of stuff, he's still having a pretty good time. Loves to go for his walks every day. Uh, you know, one thing that came up while I was at the vet yesterday that I hadn't heard before is uh, something has happened with grapes, where grapes can no longer be fed to dogs, and uh, we don't know whether something has changed, if there's a new mutation in the dog genome that uh, has made them uh, uh, somehow now uh, 
unable to eat grapes and before uh, they could. There's lots of dogs out there that still uh, appear to not be affected by it, but if you have a dog that uh, that is sensitive to whatever has changed here, it can be uh, fatal. And uh, my vet had just been at a uh, at a conference on toxicology and uh, there are laboratory retrievers that have died from eating as few as five grapes. So uh, uh, it could be something that they're using in uh, the fertilizer or in, in some kind of preservative or some kind of pesticide. Could be that some, uh, you know, experiment has happened in genetically modified uh, grapes that are now in the food stream that weren't before. And I'm not trying to push the, the GMO uh, panic button here, but uh, who knows what exactly has changed but I just thought that was so weird because you know buddy when he was a puppy he ate uh, he ate grapes all the time he loved grapes and uh, you know I, I wouldn't give him a grape now because uh, even if I did he wouldn't eat it he doesn't he's not interested in that stuff at this point but it's just weird to think about how reality can shift like that uh, anyway, let's uh, let's move on to uh, one of the blog entries that uh, are that I posted recently, uh, and uh, this one is called Tens Google and the Expanding Universe. And uh, some of these blog entries are like braided knots that are are made up of uh, two or three or four strings that are all kind of braided together. And so this one takes the idea of uh, tens uh, of groupings of ten. Uh, how Google is tracking uh, the the meme space that we're living in right now and uh, the expanding universe and tries to fit all those ideas together in a creative way. So uh, I'm just going to read that blog entry to you now and then we'll talk a little bit about some of the, the ramifications from that. Are we approaching some sort of global shift in consciousness and could that be triggered from higher dimensions? 2008 will be the 10th anniversary of the surprising announcement that the expansion of our universe is accelerating. An idea that seems counterintuitive. If our universe started from high energy, high order, the Big Bang, and is moving towards low energy, low order, maximum entropy, that implies the image of a clockwork toy that is winding down. And that image does not fit with a universe of accelerating expansion. This month's Scientific American features a great article about brains, that's B-R-A-N-E-S, not, uh, not brains in your head, and how the accelerating expansion of the universe may be proof of the existence of higher dimensions. The article by Cliff Burgess and Fernando Quevedo is called The Great Cosmic Roller Coaster Ride. Please check it out. 2008 is also the 10th anniversary of Google the search engine that has changed the way we interact with information more than any other invention in the history of mankind. Don't be evil is their unofficial motto. And that's a great one. The power of Google to inform and guide the general public's impression of what ideas are important and what ideas are popular is immense. And the ongoing war from get-rich-quick scammers and spammers who try to manipulate Google's search results for their own profit is a huge part of that story. The imagining the 10th dimension way of visualizing reality can be used to tie all these ideas together. Information equals reality has been the prime focus of my blog entries in the last few weeks. This basic idea from quantum physics shows us how everything fits together. And the desire to find a unity within a diverse range of ideas is what this project is all about. If information equals reality, then absolutely everything about our reality can be thought of as patterns and shapes in the information that is the underlying fabric of quantum indeterminacy. Subatomic particles, fractals, life, consciousness, and our observed universe are all patterns that result from the flip book of third dimensional nows that we are stringing together from one frame of Planck time after another. In the Imagining the Tenth Dimension animation, sound is an important part of the information being conveyed. For instance, no matter what dimension we are exploring, there is the arrow sound effect representing a particular point, a scrape indicating lines being constructed from joining one point to another, and the card riffling sound effect to show that anything we think of as a continuous line is actually being constructed one point at a time, if we can only look close enough. Burgess and Covedo's article explains how our universe might be the result of the interactions of a three-dimensional brain with a seven-dimensional brain. With the ends of certain superstrings constrained by brains, they are sliding around within. To use my flipbook analogy then, we can see how the illusion of continuous reality that we are experiencing 
is actually a series of 3D states for our 3D universe interacting with the 3D brain. And each observed state is one plank length away from the next. Each observed state can be thought of as a page in a gigantic cosmic flipbook. The flipbook from the Big Bang to now appears to be one specific set of flipbook pages, which we think of as the 4D line of time. But each next available now page that could be possibly selected for our flipbook comes from a fifth dimensional probability space. And the fifth dimension is where Kaluza proved our reality is defined. And I, I should mention here that uh, Einstein also agreed with that. Every parallel universe that could have resulted from our Big Bang, whether it is observed or not, exists as a potential flipbook in the sixth dimension, and all those possible states are locked together by the seventh dimensional brain our universe is also interacting with. The idea I advance of our universe's basic physical laws being result of our specific location in the multiverse, as a point in the seventh dimension or as a result of our interaction with the 7D brain, then can be tied into this concept. As usual though, I'll take pains here to caution readers that I'm not claiming my way of visualizing the dimensions is the explanation for string theory, any more than it's the explanation of Kabbalah, zero-point field theory, Japanese anime and video game plots, metaphysics, or any of the other diverse range of belief systems which fans of the Tenth Dimension Project keep pointing me towards as having interesting resonances with my way of visualizing reality. From moment to moment, day to day, Google has been tracking the information that makes up our reality for almost 10 years. Ideas that can be tracked across time and space are known as memes. And physical objects that can be tracked across time and space are known as spimes. Which means that the flip book of nows we have imagined from the Big Bang to today can be thought of as a spime that represents the story of our current universe from its inception. And that idea is a very powerful meme. I've always marveled at the audacity of Google's I'm feeling lucky button. The idea that out of all the information in the world, Google might be able to show you the very best link of all still seems like mysterious magic to me. And I admit to never wanting to use that button because I like to have choices. Still, the Google toolbar, Toolbar's suggestions window is a great example of the accelerating information space we live in now. Try typing in just the letters of the alphabet, one after another, into that window and read the top 10 suggestions, here's that number again, that come up for each. This gives you a snapshot in time of what is important, what is talked about, what is the dominant set of memes within our culture right now. Both memes and spimes are multidimensional shapes, each with a beginning and an ending someplace out there in the timeless multiverse. The feeling that we live in times that are accelerating towards something larger as a result of the rapidly accelerating meme space we live in might be connected to the same higher dimensional effects that are causing our universe to accelerate its expansion as well. I believe both are eventually going to be shown to be the result and the proof of higher dimensions in the information that is creating our reality. So that's the blog entry, and uh, so I just want to talk a little bit about some of the ideas that are in that. Uh, first of all, the, um, the idea of uh, dimensions is often dismissed by people who say, how can there even be any higher dimensions? How can you prove their existence? And uh, this, uh, particularly in, in popular books like Lee Smolin's uh, The Trouble with Physics, is one of, the, uh, one of the basic criticisms that they have of any theory that requires there to be higher dimensions. Uh, there's no way to observe them. There's no way to prove them. So that's what's exciting about this idea of uh, our accelerating universe, uh, expansion of our universe, could be uh, actually a proof of there being higher dimensions because it could be that we are approaching another brain that is actually causing our universe to expand and expand in a, an increasingly accelerating way because that brain is becoming closer to us and that relates to the idea of what I've talked about here before that uh, that it's actually the uh, uh, gravity is the only effect that uh, physicists say can actually make its effects be known or felt across the higher dimensions. So, uh, so it, it could be that that's what we're talking about there. Um, the idea also that uh, that space time is four dimensional, I think, uh, relates very nicely to the idea that uh, Kaluza proposed and Einstein eventually agreed with uh, that uh, the basic reality for us is coming from the fifth dimension 
ties really nicely to the idea then that uh, that uh, you hear in, in things like or projects like the elegant universe where they talk about how uh, the dimensions above might actually be compactified down to the Planck length and the reason that we can't see the higher dimensions is because they are uh, down at such a tiny microscopic submicroscopic level that uh, that they're impossible for us to view so if we take the idea of free will existing within the fifth dimension then the 4d line of time that we're creating right now from now to now in the flip book of, of time that we're creating is an illusion it's actually happening in a fifth dimensional probability space and the uh, and that means the the elegant universe image of of uh, us being on this this fifth dimensional wire and that we're actually rotating around uh, to create our reality uh, 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 within the higher dimensions but we're on a, unaware of it because we're like as in the animation that I show uh, the flatlander on a on a Mobius strip we're not aware of the twisting and turning that we're doing in the higher dimensions uh, once again we've we found a way then to tie all these different ideas together higher dimensions, quantum physics and indeterminacy, Everett's uh, uh, multiverse, the, uh, the many worlds theory, which uh, he proposed way back in 1954 and, uh, and uh, ended up uh, his theories now being embraced, but uh, he actually quit quantum physics entirely because uh, nobody would listen to him back then and, and uh, that idea was suppressed for decades. Um, now multi-dimensional uh, reality as it's uh, defined from those higher dimensions is is starting to embrace the whole Everett multi-world or many worlds theory. It's interesting how uh, memes again uh, rise and fall in time and space and uh, the, the many worlds meme is uh, much more successful now, much more recognized now than it was for all of Everett's life, you know, which is kind of a sad thing to think about. Um, talking about uh, memes then and how they rise and fall uh, let's talk about the 10th dimension meme, the, the way of, of thinking about reality that we're exploring here. Uh, when it was introduced to the world uh, back in the summer of 2006, there was a, a big lump of enthusiasm for it uh, right at the start. And uh, then we got into um, uh, about a year of, of the meme uh, just kind of coasting. And then what's been happening in the last few months again is that that meme is, is rising in popularity. More and more people are talking about it all over the world. Uh, Google then as a way to track memes uh, is interesting. You know, like a few, two years ago before the book and this website were launched were to type my name, Rob Bryant, in, into uh, Google, you would have found a, a bunch of stuff about my work as a composer and producer. And, uh, and now uh, if you type Rob Bryant in, into Google, uh, that stuff's probably way down there in the list still, but everything now because uh, a lot more of the the conversation and uh, texting and and uh, uh, tag linking that's happening in in the, the Google verse, if you want to call it that, is about this tenth dimension project. So uh, uh, I've been talking about uh, the idea that information equals reality. If you type those three words into to Google now, you, you come up uh, with a lot of the things that I've posted about those ideas and I encourage you to do so because uh, it is a, an interesting way of seeing how Google tracks those ideas in time and space and that if we're talking about anything existing out in the timeless multiverse, it has a beginning, it has a, a middle where uh, a meme can be very popular and uh, and you'll have an ending where where that idea will will uh, eventually probably be subsumed by some other uh, more all-inclusive idea that uh, satisfies the critics of this one who say Rob Bryant is not a physicist he doesn't know the math how could he be talking about uh, the nature of reality I'm talking about it from an intuitive sense I'm talking about it from uh, a sense of trying to tie a lot of disparate threads together and uh, I say it uh, you know uh, with recognition that uh, that uh, I'm not a physicist and I don't want anybody to say uh, that I'm trying to pretend to be one because I'm certainly not and I do try to make that clear on a regular basis. Uh, so uh, I'm going to finish off this entry today with one of the songs that uh, has been around now from uh, the beginning of the project and we haven't talked about for a little while, uh, the anthropic viewpoint. And that, uh, that relates to what I was uh, saying just now about Everett's many worlds theory, which is the idea that from this moment in time, 
there are actually branching realities that are created by observation of the quantum wave function right, right out to the uh, universe that we exist within, which means that if I got out of bed this morning and decided to uh, turn left at the door or right at the door, that created branching universes where one or the other reality exists. And uh, the quantum physics uh, idea of the quantum wave, wave function is actually resolved much more easily if you're willing to accept that. But uh, when we talk about how could there be all these other universes that uh, we're not able to witness, uh, one of the explanations that uh, is used is the anthropic viewpoint, which says uh, we're in the universe we're in because it's the one we're witnessing to, uh, or that we're observing as quantum observers. Uh, those other observers uh, that uh, represent the other me's do exist out there in the multiverse, but that's not the one that I'm currently in. And uh, this song then pitches those two ideas against each other, the one that says, there is only one reality, it's the one we're in, and uh, the, the uh, kind of amusing uh, chorus of the song which says, in the anthropic viewpoint, the reason we're here is because we're here. And, uh, and uh, that actually explains a lot then if you're trying to imagine the entire nature of reality. So uh, thanks for watching today and uh, do keep those, uh, those comments coming. Uh, we're trying to respond to people who, who post comments on YouTube and here at the chat room and in the 10th Dimension form. Uh, we've also simplified the, uh, the address to get to the blog now. If you go to 10thdimension.com slash blog, it's a little easier than the, the address that, uh, that we've been using up to now. So uh, here's the song and uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.
in the anthropic viewpoint.